I'm Jonas Hollenbrennan and today I'm just going to take you through a few chainsaw features and stuff for safety and just basic management of the chainsaw. So here I have a 30cc chainsaw on my hand. It's an Iron Hill which is an off-brand chainsaw. You have your Husqvarna here and you have your still. They're kind of your main two that are leading the market in terms of sales and stuff. So I'll just run through some of the safety features on this Iron Hill. The first safety feature is a scabbard. The scabbard protects the chain and the blades of it when it's in transport. You can handle it and stuff to stop you getting cut. So that's the first safety feature. Your second safety feature is when the chainsaw is going under here now, you have a chain catcher. This is if something gets in between the chain here and it flips the chain off, that when your chain's on, it doesn't come back and hit you in the hand. So this is your chain catcher. You always have to make sure that this is on the, on the chainsaw. You can replace the chain catchers. They're not very expensive. They're only two euro and it's just light aluminium and there's a screw to take it on and off. Another safety feature when your chain's on, your chain, if your chainsaw is kicking back, you have your chain brake here. So you'll see your chain brake if it flicks back to and it'll stop the chainsaw dead. So this is your chain brake. To go again, you just click. When you're moving around with the chainsaw, always, if the chainsaw is running and you're moving, always have the chain brake on. So you can walk around with the chainsaw and when you're ready to cut, just flip the chain brake off and then you're ready to cut. When you're cutting, never cut in center. So never stand, because if the chainsaw does flip up, you see the target here, you're the target. Whereas if you're cutting out, lead one foot forward, lean in, and you cut like this. Because you see, if it flips, you're not hitting either your face or your chest. Same can be going for your left, our cut, cutting like this, so it doesn't flip up. Don't lean out over the chainsaw when you're cutting. Another safety feature is your throttle control. So you see, this is your throttle here on the chainsaw. So your chainsaw won't run you see, your throttle won't run without first pressing this down and going, so your chain won't run. So that's accidental if you're walking around and you have a finger on the throttle that doesn't accidentally run. Uh, your rear handguard is another safety feature. Your rear handguard just protects your hand. You can see as in here, it protects your rear hand. You also have anti-vibration springs, so that makes it more comfortable. You'll see you have bushings here, you have a spring here, and you have one on this side. And that makes the chainsaw much more comfortable. It's kind of anti-vibration. So they're kind of your main safety features of a chainsaw. I'll just go through a quick demonstration of starting and fueling up your chainsaw. So you want to put your chainsaw on a flat and level surface. Preferably for the environment stuff, so if you had a small tarp when you're filling that you could put underneath the chainsaw to avoid fuel runoff. So first I'm going to change the petrol mix. So the petrol mix is ranging from a 40 to 1 mix is what the Einhill takes, a Husqvarna takes a 50 to 1 mix. So just be cautious that not all chainsaws take the petrol, the same petrol mix. So first of all, this is already fueled up, so I'm just going to run through. So you open your petrol cap. Here's a Husqvarna can. It's a combi can, so you have your petrol and your oil in one. So here's your petrol here. So here are non-leak spouts. So what you do is the petrol's not coming out, but as soon as you press the petrol can against this, the petrol will start flowing out and then it'll cut out once you stop and you just lift it up and then make sure to lock this back down to avoid accidental discharge of petrol. Same with the oil, oil is the same. On cold days the oil can be slow to come out of nozzles like this because the oil becomes more viscous kind of in warmer weather. It you know it runs a lot easier in warmer weather. So just a quick note, just that. Uh, once you have your chainsaw fueled up, you want to make sure that your chain brake is on. 
and you want to put your chainsaw down. You want to make sure that there's no obstruction underneath the bar. So you'll see here that there's no obstruction underneath the bar. What you're going to do is you're going to put your right foot forward and stand on this. Oh, sorry, I'm ahead of myself. You actually want to turn it on and then pump the fuel primer. So just pump it until it becomes firm to press. You're going to knock on your choke. You only knock on the choke when the chainsaw is cold, so you're cold starting. You put your right foot, as demonstrated before, over here. You put your weight down here and you'll pull. So you, so you hear the first pull, there was no, and on the second pull it fired. So when you're fired, you can hit your throttle to knock off your choke. And I'm going to lean over again and I'm going to give it another couple of pulls. So now the chainsaw is running. We're going to knock that. So now that's a cold start on a chainsaw. For a warm start on a chainsaw, when it's going, you can put your chainsaw in between your legs. You don't have to turn on for a warm start and kind of pinch it between your knees, have it pointed out here, out at this angle, and you're going to pull. So there's your warm start, your standing start, and a cold start for a chainsaw. So that's this chainsaw. This is now a top handle saw. You see on the top handle saw there's no rear grip. This is an arborist saw. So it's the same, pretty much the same features, but this is a battery saw, so it takes battery. So you have less fuel consumption, it's less noisy, um, it's easier kind of to manage in the tree. Here's a lanyard. This lanyard will clip on and keep the chainsaw strapped to my side as I'm climbing, climbing the tree. When I want to use it, I'll have a, a carabiner and I'll flip it off the carabiner and then I can work at the length of my lanyard. So just for demonstration, you'll see the ease. This doesn't have to be started. It just And that's it. That's it on and off. So it's kind of a lot more practical for a professional user uh, or someone who doesn't want to go through the rigmarole uh, of starting the chainsaw and stuff. And this is available in a rear handle as well. Um, I'll go through, I'll go on to just, I'll touch briefly on my climbing equipment here. So here's my harness. This is kind of your main kind of your main uh, your main piece of kind of safety equipment. You always want to make sure that your bridge between your harness is in good order. You want to check it between climbs and even if you stop for lunch, you want to have a quick look at your harness just to make sure that there's no chaffing or nicks or not no components are worn because this is really your kind of first line of defense. So your harness is kind of your first line of defense. You know, you do not want your harness to fail. Your harnesses are ranging, they can range from between 150 to 300 euro. So just to put on, it's like a rock climbing harness or anything. To put on, you just, the harness is actually the wrong way around. You just step through your harness. So you just step through your harness, you've got two clips, on, or you've got, sorry, three clips on your harness. You've got this first clip here, and you want to make sure that it's tight, and you don't want any kind of loose bits. So when you're climbing, just basics climbing a tree, you don't want loose. So you want to just fold this in a few times, because you don't want to get snagged when you're up in the tree. Your second clip is your left leg clip. You clip that and make sure it's tight. And your third is your right leg clip, and you clip. So now you're kind of clipped into your harness. You see I have two O-rings on the harness, so that's for attaching my main line to. 
So I can go right or I can go left attachment, right attachment, and for auxiliary lanyards and stuff. So just a quick run through of lanyards. Your lanyard, it's, I climb on a two-point system, so I'm tied into the tree by a main line and I'm clipped in with a lanyard. Your lanyard is what goes around the tree. So I'll just clip in here. So your lanyard is what goes around the tree. You see here, here's a flip line. So this lanyard is a steel core lanyard. So this is used when I'm section felling a tree and it's got a steel core. It's not a rope lanyard, it's a steel core on the inside. So when I'm climbing, I'll be climbing with spikes. As you can see here, climbing spikes for section fell. You'll see these just clip on to the inside of your feet, inside of your boot, and you'll spike into the tree. This is only used when you're section felling a tree because the spikes, when you're puncturing the bark of the tree, it can actually introduce disease. And what a lot of people would actually climb for pruning on spikes, but that's not recommended practice because it introduces and it can introduce disease and pathogens into the tree. So here's your wire core lanyard, so your flip line. So you'll be flipping that up the tree as you go and spiking in. Our earlier lanyard is what we're climbing on when we're climbing with the main line. And that's just your typical lanyard here. On that lanyard, I had a, a rope grab. On this lanyard, I'm gonna use a friction device known as a prusik. Your prusik is just, um, this is just a prusik I made up. I have pre-made prusiks here as well. If I can find them in the mess, uh, well, I'll just go through for an example. So your prusik, I'll show you how your prusik is tied. This is just as an example, your rope is here and your prusik is tied. So you go through once and you'll come back around and you'll go through a second time. And that's a two wrap prusik. So you see your prusik is the prusik is now a friction hitch. I can put, I can trust all my weight on this prusik. So you see here, I'm gonna hold this up and you see when I pull down, the prusik doesn't slip. But if I put my hand to the prusik, so it's used as a friction. It's a friction, not the prusik. So you see here. So I'll be clipped in and you see, that will hold my weight on this prusik but just to let it off, I just put my hand around it and with my thumb, I just push down and you'll see it'll slide. So this is one of the main knots and it's a beginner knot for climbing. You have a valiant trussel knot, a VT knot, and you have different variations of prusik, a French prusik and stuff. So that's just the basics of climbing. So here's, that's me going through the lanyards now and that's a friction, your prusik. I always climb with a silky saw, so it's a hand saw. So I'd have it clipped in, clipped in here. Your hand saw is great for when you're climbing the tree and for small branches. And it cuts on a pull motion. So you'll never have, it always cuts on a pull motion. So here's your silky saw. This is a silky Zubat 300, so it's 300 mil long. And this is one of the most popular lengths. So it's a good kind of hand pruning saw. When you're up in the tree, it's very good for if there's small bits of branches and stuff, and it'll cut anything up to kind of four inches, you know, it can cut very well. Obviously not as easy as the chainsaw, but... Here is a friction saver device. So here is a friction saver device. When I climb up into the tree, instead of the rope, on a branch, uh, chawing against the branch as I climb, what I'm gonna do is, when I set my line in a tree, I'm gonna use a friction saver device. This device is also handy because I don't have to climb back up the tree to retrieve my rope. When I climb out of the tree, what I do is when I'm on the ground, 
you see here this is my climbing line and I'll just find the end so here's the end of my climbing line so what your climbing line is your climbing line always goes through when you're setting it in the tree it goes through the gold ring first or your smaller diameter ring first and then it's going to go through your larger diameter or your blue ring in this case so you see here this is the friction device so see how smoothly this runs on you have different you have rough bark the like see your douglas fir and that can cause can cause a lot of wear on your rope and you have to replace your rope a lot quicker but with a friction device you're running across smooth aluminium rings so you see how smooth and the reason we go through the larger ring first is or the smaller ring first is because when I climb out of the tree what I'm going to do is I've this is a cambium saver and I'm just going to if you can see here I'm going to push it through the hole in my rope and I'm going to knot it here so just like this and when I'm down on the ground and this is at the very top of the tree instead of climbing to get this what I do is I pull my rope with this tight on the bottom pull my rope pull my rope and you'll see the ball will fit through the larger diameter but when it goes to go through the smaller diameter it'll get caught so this will actually my arm is the branch here and you'll see this will actually flip it and it'll come down to the ground so it saves a lot of time because you have to climb at multiple stages in the tree and it saves having to climb down in multiple stages you can just set your line um, in terms of other gear just I'll run through a few other ones to make my life a bit easier coming on from the Prusik you have a hitch so this is a hitch pulley so a hitch pulley you use a VT knot and it's a it's a method of climbing uh, and instead of using the, the um, Prusik as a friction knot you're using a VT knot and you're using this pulley so a common term for it is called hitch climbing so it just kind of makes life a bit easier and here you see here is a foot ratchet so this is just like a rope ratchet you see I put this mount this on my right foot see it's mounted on my boot on my right foot and the rope will go in Oh, I'm trying to do a balancing act as well well just for instance the rope will go in in on it and then I click down here and now it's on so this is just for climbing up so you see it's the same when pressure comes down on it it's like um, I forget the name for it it'll actually lock it'll lock on the rope as it goes as it goes the pressure comes down on it and when you're traveling up the rope when you're traveling up the rope it'll run smoothly you see I press down and it'll know so it's just a one-way device so it helps me to get up the tree instead of using a lot of arm work and stuff it's just it takes kind of the pull out of your arms uh, just to go through quickly is wedges I like to carry wedges with me uh, this is a high lift wedge, uh, this would be for felling trees, I like to use this when I'm felling trees. So I'll hammer it into a tree, if the tree is starting to lean back, sometimes you feel when you're cutting in, your saw will start to get caught and you'll just hammer it in and it helps, it helps to kind of lift it up and allow you to cut up to your wedge and then you can beat it in the rest of the way and it kind of helps tip the tree up and kind of send it in the direction you want. These are small wedges that I sometimes like to bring up in the trees and it's the same principle just on a smaller scale. If I feel my saw is starting to get caught in a tight space what I'll do is just hammer one of these in and then it lets me just safely cut through, extract my saw and then these are retrievable and they're very cheap you know to be kind of what we class as consumable you know if they break it's not the end but it saves a lot of time. Uh, that is all that I have on just the basics of 
kind of our chainsaws and we just touched on the basics of climbing a tree. I'll later demonstrate different cuts and stuff, but for the moment, that's it. Thank you.